What about now? All right. Works nonetheless. Either way, most of you heard me. We're glad you're here. Appreciate y'all being here. We're in for a treat today. Thank you so much for coming. I know that you obviously love the Lord or else you wouldn't be here either. But I'm excited to see how we can grow today in this theme and this topic. And I know you will be treated very well. I know Caleb McGoy uh, from Peachtree uh, will be doing a fantastic job today in presenting God's Word to us. I know we're going to show him our undivided attention. We're in for a good treat. And of course we have a lot of fun things planned after the uh, lesson as well and other things that we can do. But I wanted to give you just somewhat of a uh, schedule. But you'll, you have the schedule if you have the flyer from online. But nonetheless, we will start with, of course, a, uh, th about three songs from Garrett. Garrett will kick us off, and then it will be Caleb to uh, be able to give us a portion of God's Word. We'll take a small break, and we may start a little bit early from what I've heard, maybe a little bit earlier prior to. It's always good to be ahead than behind, but uh, we're going to be in for a treat. But nonetheless, thank you all so much for being here. Like I said, if you need anything... Uh, Come to me or anyone else at Oak Kill. we be more than happy to help you. Garrett's going to kick us off, and, uh, and we're in for a treat. Thank you all so much. All right, Garrett, it's all you, man. Good afternoon. Okay, we're just dead this morning. They were just dead. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. It's good to see all of you all here. If you would stand for this first song, we're going to sing out to the Lord. Sing shout hallelujah. Let's sing. Shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah unto the Lord. Shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah unto the Lord. Sing aloud to God, let the people shout before His throne. Hallelujah, sing aloud to God. Shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah unto the Lord. Shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah unto the Lord. From the ends of the earth, from the depths of the sea, let all creation From the depths of the sea, let all creation praise His name. Shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah unto the Lord. Shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah unto the Lord. Shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah unto the Lord. You may be seated. Next song, Be Firm Foundation. Firm foundation. Let's sing. Jesus, you're my firm foundation. I know I can stand secure. Jesus, you're my firm foundation. I put my hope in your holy word. I put my hope in your holy word. Jesus, you're my firm foundation. I Stand secure, Jesus, you're my firm foundation. I put my hope in your holy word. I put my hope in your holy word. I have a living hope. I have a future. God has a plan for me. I'm sure, Jesus, you're my firm foundation. I know I can stand secure. 
Jesus, you're my firm foundation. I put my hope in your holy word. I put my hope in your holy word. Your word is faithful, mighty with power. God will deliver me of this I'm sure. Of this I'm sure, Jesus, you're my firm foundation. I know I can stand secure. Jesus, you're my firm foundation. I put my hope in your holy word. I put my hope in your holy word. Jesus, you're my firm foundation. I know I can stand secure. Jesus, you're my firm foundation. I put my hope in your holy word. I put my hope in your holy word. If you would stand for this next song before Caleb comes up here and speaks to us, it would be How Great Is Our God. How great is our God. Let's sing. The splendor of a king, clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light and dark. be seated. All right. I think I'm on. Am I on? We'll see. There we go. I, I, I hear myself. Hey, guys, how we doing? How are you doing tonight? All right. Well, great, wonderful. I'm, I'm glad to hear it. Uh, I'm uh, so blessed to have the opportunity to be here with you, uh, be here with you this evening. Uh, so uh, uh, thankful to the leadership at Oak Hill for this opportunity. Uh, anytime I speak somewhere uh, for the first time, I'd just like to do a quick introduction. I uh, feel like you n- n- know a little bit about me. Uh, my name's Caleb. Uh, I, uh, I, I grew up in South Alabama. Uh, I met my wife uh, uh, in college at Fulton University, and I was a youth minister in Ohio for six years. Uh, I spent some time in youth ministry and preaching, and just this last year moved to Georgia, uh, where I'm the youth minister at the Peachtree City Church of Christ, and I'm uh, glad to be back here in the, uh, in the South. Uh, something that you should know about me is I have a speech impediment, and so sometimes I'll try to say a word, and it'll take a second to come out. So hopefully that's not too distracting for you, but I just it's helpful for me to go ahead and tell you so you aren't confused or wondering what's going on. But anyways, I'm 
I'm blessed to have the opportunity to be here. Thank you, Garrett, for the songs. I, I love singing. Um, something that um, I'll do in our sessions uh, this afternoon and this evening is I'll lead us in a song um, a couple times. We'll sing it, I think, twice in this session, and we'll sing it again in the later sessions. Hopefully, it's a song that you know, and if you don't know, hopefully you learn a new song. It, it's an older song, and it's very easy if we'll sing that song together. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, O my soul. Rejoice, take joy, my King, in what you hear, and may it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. The theme of our time together is I love the Lord, and I love this song that we sang. Like I said, we'll sing it a couple times, so hopefully I'll keep you on your toes and you're ready to sing it with me. Um, if you're here tonight, it was said already, if you're here tonight, you probably, it's safe to assume, you have a love for the Lord. You, you, uh, you know about Jesus and you, you're passionate about what he has done for you on the cross. It's safe to say that you love the Lord. If you're, if you're like me and you grew up in the church, it might sound kind of silly to think that we should talk about, as Christians, our love for the Lord. But something that happens over time, as we, as we grow and as we mature in life, it becomes harder, I think, to say that clearly. It becomes harder to say that we love the Lord as, uh, as hard things happen in, in our life, as, as, as we learn more and we learn more about ourselves, as we get more attached to maybe the things here on this earth, it can become harder for us to commonly think, I love the Lord. We respond to this love of the Lord, this, this love that we have for God a number of ways. As a church, we, we do it every time we gather together. We're singing and, and lifting up our voices, giving glory and honor to God, saying, I love, I love the Lord. You say, I love the Lord when you're baptized, and, and you confess that Jesus is the Lord of your life. When you repent and you turn from the life that you used to live, you're saying, I love the Lord. But what happens over time in, in our life where it becomes hard to say that? Here's what I hope to accomplish together with the time that we have this afternoon. Number one, I hope to reignite a love for the Lord within you. If, if maybe when you were baptized, maybe uh, it was at Inagehi, uh, 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 it was at a camp, or, or you were at an event and you got baptized and you were so excited about your love for the Lord, and maybe over time that excitement has, has kind of waned a little bit. You aren't as excited as you used to be. Hopefully we can reignite that fire together. Or maybe if you're, you've kind of been on the fence, you're, you, you know, you're, you're here as a friend, you're, you're here as a guest, you've been going to church for a while, but the love of the Lord has been something that you've seen other people have. It's not, it isn't something that you've kind of made your own. Hopefully we're able to light that fire together. Also hope that we're able to strengthen our spiritual foundations. So that if you already love the Lord, when the time comes when your faith will be tested, when the time comes in your life when storms will come, hopefully the foundations that we're continuing to build on tonight will help you on into where your life is going to lead you. I also hope to show you that what you can do right now as a teenager, as a middle schooler or a high schooler or as, as an adult, things you can do right now to show the people in your life that you love the Lord. The song that we sang together, I Love You, Lord, it's one of my favorite hymns. It's kind of like we all knew the song, which I'm glad we sing songs a lot at our church that I, I know and the teens don't, so I sing a lot of solos sometimes. But I'm glad that you knew the song. Uh, it's, I love it that it's so simple. It's just a short song, just, just one phrase kind of repeated uh, a couple of different uh, a couple of different ways. The melody is very easy to sing, and I find myself, as I'm going throughout my life, and I'm seeing the, the, uh, the good things in my life, that I'm going back to those words. 
I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice. I, I see his beautiful creation. We had this hawk in our yard this past week, and I mean, it was really scary. We got up really close. We were trying to take a video of it, and he, and he flew by, and I lost him in the camera. I got really scared. But just seeing the majesty of this beautiful hawk, I was just, man, I love, I love you, Lord. And then we heard, heard what I assume were the hawk eggs that had just hatched up, up high in the tree, and it's just so cool to see God's beautiful creation. It makes us say, I, I love the Lord. I, 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 I think that refrain when I spend time together with my kids and my family, I didn't say earlier, I'm married uh, to my beautiful wife, Maggie, uh, almost for seven years. Um, our oldest son, Harrison, he passed away in 2018. Our daughter, Ariah, uh, turns four in November, and our son, Canaan, uh, turned two over the summer. And I love getting to spend time with my family just doing absolutely nothing, just getting, to, just getting to be in their presence. And it's in those moments where I'm just like, man, I love, I love the Lord. And that song kind of sits in my mind, and I hope as we talk about our love that we have for the Lord, hopefully you can kind of take that mentality into your life as well. And it's easy at church and at places like this for us to think that, for us to think, man, I love the Lord. I, I love the Lord when, when we're gathered together as believers. I love the Lord when we're at a camp or we're at a youth rally. But do we often think that as actively when we're at our schools or when you're at, a, at an activity or a sporting event? Or maybe do you even think that when you're at home with your families? How often in our regular life are we thinking to ourselves, I love the Lord. If we don't love the Lord in our private life, I wonder how long we'll love the Lord in our public life. And I hope that's something we can see this afternoon together in Scripture, is that we can have a very rich and exciting and fulfilling love for the Lord, regardless of where you are in your life, individually and as a church. In our first session together, like it's on the screen, I hope we can see that nothing else compares to our God. Now, I want to pause for just a moment. I'll have a couple of, a couple of opportunities for, for, uh, uh, for me to hear from you, but right now, I just want you to close your eyes, if, if, you'll, if you'll close your eyes for just a moment, and I want you to visualize, you're here tonight, you love the Lord, I want you to visualize what is something, what is the thing that you love most about the Lord. Now, keep your eyes closed, and just imagine what it is about God that you love. Maybe you're picturing a scene in the Bible where God does something amazing for his people. Maybe you're imagining baby Jesus in the major, wrapped in swaddling clothes with the angels singing overhead. Maybe you're imagining the voice of God echoing out over creation saying, let there be light. Now keep your eyes closed and you're imagining this scene, the thing that you love most about our Lord. Do you smell anything? Do you smell anything? Is there any aroma that, that you attach to this, to this image that I, I see a couple of you breathing in your noses? That's good. Um, do, you, do you hear anything? Are there any sounds that you associate with your love of the Lord? Now, how about this one? Do you, do you taste anything? Is there something about this image of God that you can physically taste what God is, this feeling that God gives you? You can open it. Uh, open up your eyes. And how, how many of you, just raise your hand, how, how many of you could associate a taste to your love for the Lord? I, 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 have, to hear, I have to hear what that was like afterwards. All throughout Scripture, we have this, these great images of, of God's love, that God is worthy of love, but I especially love what the psalmist says in Psalm 34. He says that the goodness of the Lord can be Tasted. I'm going to read through the beginning of the psalm. We'll spend a lot of time here this afternoon, and we'll read the ending later. This is Psalm 34, starting in verse 1. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, delivered me from all of my fears. Those who look upon him are radiant, and their faces shall never be ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him from his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and he delivers them. O oh, taste and see 
that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. O fear the Lord, you his saints. For those who fear him have no lack. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Did you see the beauty in this verse, this idea that we can really taste and see the goodness of God? At the, uh, at the beginning of the psalm, he says, I'll bless, uh, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. We see a lot of creative imagery in the psalms, but I don't think the psalmist is kidding when he says, you can taste and see that God is good. The goodness of God is not just something that's abstract, that it's something that you can think. It truly is something that you can feel and you can experience and you can know. When we enjoy God, what the psalmist is saying, a, a good taste is left in your mouth. You know what I mean? This, this idea that you eat something and it just gives you, you know, it just sits on your mouth really well. I want you to think about maybe a food or a drink that you don't like, or maybe it's a medicine that you have to take, maybe as a syrup. This, this, this thing that you don't like, but you know that maybe you have to take it or you're being forced to take it. When you, when you take that medicine and you wash it down with water or, or you eat that food and you, and you wash it down, you still have that feeling in the back of your mouth, that slimy feeling of, of the taste that you, that you don't like. You know what I mean? Have you ever met somebody who left a bad taste in your mouth? You, you know, you can't really put your finger on what it was, but it was just maybe the way that they talked to you or maybe it was, it was the kind of language that they used or the way that they treated other people. When you leave their presence, they just kind of left a bad feeling in the taste of your mouth. You know what I mean? Maybe they left a bad feeling in your stomach about that person. The psalmist says he spends time with the Lord, and the feeling that he gets is good. The taste that's left in his mouth, lifting praise and glory to God, is a good taste. Here's what he says he saw when he spends time with the Lord. He seeks out the Lord, and God answers him. Man, does that taste good. He looked for the Lord, and he, he was proud. He was overjoyed because he looked at God. I'm, I'm a brave fan, and um, I, I would imagine a couple of you guys here, uh, guys and girls here, are, are, are Braves fans down the back, and uh, we weren't very proud of looking on at the Braves a couple of weeks ago. I was, was pretty ashamed. When I think about this feeling of looking at something, maybe it's, you know, your sibling that you're cheering on at an event, or maybe it's someone in your youth group who, who you're proud of the things that they're accomplishing. But then at other times, you can look at that same person, maybe it's a sibling or a friend, and that person is maybe letting you down, or that person maybe isn't doing the things that you know that they're capable of. The psalmist says he looks to the Lord time and time again, and he's overjoyed. He's proud of what he sees. He leaves the, the, his time with God leaves a good taste in his mouth. A poor man cried out, and God saved him. He says, when we were a people in need, we found refuge in God. He spends time with God, and it leaves a good taste in his mouth. The first thing that I want us to remember tonight is the things that God has done for other people he will do for you. The things that God has done for me, he will do for you. Will you say that with me? The things that God has done for others, he will do for me. Do you believe that? Do you really believe that the things that God does for others, the things that God does in the Bible, he is capable of doing for you? Or maybe do you think that the stuff, the good stuff in the Bible, what we read about God is maybe for somebody else? Yeah, we know that God's good. Yeah, we know that God hears his people when they cry out. But does he really hear me? Hopefully, we have a strong, rich love of the Lord. But there are also things on this earth that we love too. What are some things that you love? I want you to think of the things that you love to do. Maybe it's an act. Uh, an activity that you spend a lot of time on. Maybe it's a hobby that you're, you're really into. Maybe you like to do some type of craft or make jewelry. Maybe it's an activity or a sport that you play. Maybe you play volleyball or baseball, and you, you love that game that you play. Maybe it's a person. Maybe you have a significant other that you've been spending a lot of time with, or maybe you've been spending a lot of time looking at them from afar. You don't quite love them in person yet. Maybe they don't know that you love them. Uh, 
whatever it is, we have things here on this earth that we love. Here's what Jesus says about earthly things in Matthew 6. Do not lay up for yourselves treasure on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, or where thieves break in and steal, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Jesus is reminding his, his listeners that the things of this earth are temporary. Now, I don't know why, but when I was a kid, every time I saw this verse or heard this verse talked about, the first things I thought of were clothes and bikes. Clothes and bikes. I don't know why I've never had a moth chew up my clothes, and I know how to ride a bike, and I've left it out in the rain a lot, and it never rusted. But for some reason, every time I, I read this verse, I always imagined, don't put your treasures in clothes and bikes. But here's the thing. Jesus isn't just talking about physical things and possessions. He's certainly not talking about clothes and bikes. He might be talking about clothes. They didn't have bikes. But Jesus is talking about these physical possessions that we love. These physical things that give us a feeling of security. These, these possessions that, that give us a sense of peace, maybe self-identity and self-worth. And maybe that is clothes. Maybe you find your identity, your person in the things that you wear Jesus isn't just, it just isn't talking about things. He's talking about all the things of this earth. These clothes and bikes, so to speak, they, they fade away. Jesus says the things of this earth fade away, but he isn't just talking about bad things, worldly things that we might think of. He's also talking about things that are good as well. It's a good thing to own a home, to live in a home, right? You might have learned when, when you were a kid that the three things that uh, somebody needs for survival are what? What are they? God. Well, God, well, God. yeah. But the three, the three physical things are, are usually food, water, and shelter. There we go. Nice to hear you all. Uh, f- food, water, and shelter, right? Shelter is a good thing. I'm a... I'm a, a, a recent first-time home buyer, and I purchased a home for my family, and it's a good thing that we all live in that house. Yeah, I, I, I hope you all live in houses that, that you love as well. It's a, it's a good thing to own a home, and when, if you've lived in your home for any amount of time, you've maybe seen your parents work on projects in your home. Maybe they've changed the kitchen or changed the floors, and you, you've wondered why they're wasting all their money on that kind of stuff. But it's because they want to have a home that they're comfortable in, that they're proud of. I've been spending a lot of time working on my m- mantle, and it's on the wall. Uh, they've been following the journey with us, and it's on the wall, and we're very proud of it. But we do these things in our home to make our home more comfortable, to make our home more like what we desire in, uh, in a place of living. Even those good things like shelter, they fade away. Even the good things like the relationships that you have, maybe the relationships with your siblings or your parents, or one day the relationship that you might have with your spouse, as good as those things are, they still fade away in comparison to what God is doing for you. It's a good thing to be married, to, to start a family. Hopefully that's something that you're thinking about. Hopefully not now, but in a couple of years. Your, your mind is wondering what that might look for you one day. And when we, when we do those things, when we do the good things that God provides for us in the way that he has designed, they are certainly a good thing in our life. But even the best things of this world pale in comparison to what God has done for us compared to what God has done for you. Even the best things in this earth cannot satisfy us in the way that God can. We can find a type of love here on this earth. We can find a type of peace here on this earth. We can find a type of comfort and excitement and joy on this earth. God desires for us to find those things. But we can't find it here in the same way that we can find it with God. Now, are there things that we treasure more than God, or the things that we treasure more than our love for the Lord. Jesus says that where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The things that you love, the things that you cherish, are going to be the things that you protect and try to, to try to keep close. Lately, there's been a lot of talk of, is, is this maybe the end of the world? You know, they, you see the stuff on the news, the uh, stuff that's happened overseas, and like, man, this, it's, 
Sounds like it's getting pretty bad. But I've started to hear some conversation of, man, do you really think Jesus is, is going to come back? Almost like it's a bad thing. Almost like it's a bad thing. If tonight, before we got back to our houses, before we got back to our home congregations, if Jesus came back, are there things here on this earth that we would be upset that we missed out on? Like, hey, Jesus, I sure am glad to see you, but, you know, we've got a big tournament coming up next weekend. Or, hey, Jesus, I sure am glad to see you, but, you know, we've got that trip to Orlando, you know, later in January. I'd, I'd really like to, you know, to get that through before we, you know, head with you. Hopefully, when the time comes for Jesus to come back, we are ready to go. But the truth is, there are things here on this earth that we are very excited about. And there are things here on this earth that we love. Do we love Jesus more than those things? We need to be aware that the desires of our heart will influence our life. Jesus says, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. That also means that the things that are in your heart, the things that you do love, that will spill out into the rest of your life. Jesus finishes the thought in verse 24. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. You, you might know that the word here used for money doesn't just mean cash. How many of you can add up actual cash? I'm just curious. Can you add up like, yeah, very cool, very, very cool. I haven't touched cash in forever, so I, I mean, I've probably forgotten. Um, the word that he's using here isn't just finances, isn't just money. It really describes all types of possessions, the things that you keep, the things that you love, the things that you have in your life. You cannot serve two things. You cannot serve God and your things. You cannot serve God and your relationships. You cannot serve God and your friends and your hobbies and your sports. It doesn't mean that if you're a Christian, you can't have a life but that does mean that if you're a Christian, your love for the Lord comes first, and your life follows after. If Jesus is the Lord of your life, he is either first or he's not in it at all. And if we're trying to fool ourselves and say, you know, I can do both. I can have this relationship with God, but I'm also really passionate about the things of this world. Like I said earlier, if we are not willing to love the Lord in our private life, I wonder how long we'll love the Lord in our public life. 1 Timothy 6.10 says that the love of money is the root of all kind of evils. He goes on to say it's through this craving that some have wandered away from the faith. It's not a bad thing to be involved in the world. It's not a bad thing to have things. It's not a bad thing to have money. But when the love of those things, the love of our relationships, the love of our stuff comes before our love of the Lord, then do we really love the Lord? The love of earthly things leads people away from their love of the Lord because if we're full on what the world has to offer, will we really crave God? If we're full on what the world has to offer, will we really crave God? How many of you have, have iPhones or an Apple device? Now, I've only been an Apple person forever. So if you're an Android person, you might have this as well, but I, I, I'm not sure. But um, hopefully you know what I'm talking about. On, on iPhones, something that's on there is it keeps, keeps track of your screen time. How many of you keep track of your, of your screen time? Yeah, it's a, it's a good habit. If you're, if you're not already doing that, maybe, maybe you should just give that a quick glance and see how, how much you're on that game or how much time you spent on that app. But that's a discussion for another time. Um, sometimes I'll see the screen time on my phone. Uh, I like to keep a widget on the home screen, you know, just so I just am keeping an eye on that. And sometimes I'll be shocked at how much I was, I was on my phone. But if you're, if you're on your phone and you're looking at your screen time, if you, something you'll see is the most used apps. It'll have categories for how much time you spent on social media or on communication or, or playing games or maybe working on school projects, maybe. I don't know. Uh, but it'll show you how much time you spent on your phone. In the section that's underneath that, under your most used categories, the next section is shows how many times you have 
picked up your phone. How many of you have seen this section? It's pretty interesting. It'll tell you how many times throughout the day you had a pickup, where you opened your phone and picked it up and looked at it. It doesn't tell you how long you picked up your phone for, but it is interesting to kind of see throughout the day you picked up your phone 25 times, 65 times, maybe 100 times, and if that's true, put your phone down. Um, we, we pick up our phone a lot, but something that else is interesting is in that pickup section. It doesn't just show you when you picked up your phone, but it also shows you, shows you the app that you first use. It'll say, you picked up your phone and the first app you used was Instagram. You, you picked up your phone and the first app you used here was your Be Real. Maybe you got a notification. If you get one tonight, let me know. Um, that first pickup section, that pickup section where it shows where you're, the first thing that you're going to, I wonder what that might look like if we had something to track our thoughts, to track the things that our minds keep going to. Maybe you wake up in the morning and the first thing that you do is you do think about your phone. Maybe you pick up your phone. I know I do. It's right there on the nightstand. I pick it up and I got to see, you know, if I have any text messages from the middle of the night. I don't know why I do that. Nobody texts me in the middle of the night. Um, we, we have things in our life that our mind keeps going to. Maybe you're out to dinner with your family and your mind keeps going to the things that your friends are doing. Or maybe you're in class and your mind is wandering and your mind goes to, man, I, I wonder what this group of people think about me. Maybe you're, you're worried about, am I behaving in a way where people are going to like the things that I'm doing? Am I dressing the way that people are going li to like how I dress? I wonder what it would look like if we could see the first hiccup on our mind. Where does our mind wander off to when it does? And I wonder how many of us it would be Scripture. That Scripture, the Word of God, is something that we just catch our mind. Oh, we can't help but keep our mind from going there. I, I wonder what it would look like if above and beyond everything in our life, we really did love the Lord. I wonder what it would look like if we went through life looking for things that we could taste and see of God's goodness. If you're not there, if you're not at that place where you're not ashamed to show someone the screen time in your mind and say, hey, look at how much I've been thinking about God today. Maybe it isn't a you problem, maybe it's a heart problem. Maybe it's we've been feeding our hearts the wrong kinds of things, and it's no surprise that our mind isn't following. Maybe the people in our life that we're allow, allowing to feed into us aren't leading us towards God, so it's no surprise that our mind isn't passively going there. I want to give you a couple of things that you can do to realign your heart, and we'll talk about a couple more in the last session. The first thing is you have to be born again. You can't change yourself into a good person. You need the blood of Jesus. You need God to turn you into the person he, who you created to be. But once you have become a Christian and once you are trying to follow God and take that love of the Lord into the rest of your life, here's a couple of things that you can do. You can m monitor what you're consuming. Maybe you ask uh, someone in your youth group or someone in your household say, hey, I want you to keep track of the things that I'm spending my time on and I'll help keep track of the things that you're spending your time on and we can help keep each other accountable on are we putting good things in our life. You can also keep track of who you're allowing in your life. You know, they say, uh, or uh, it's been said that you are the sum of your five closest friends. Have you ever heard that? That you're the sum of your five closest friends? When you think about the people that you spend a lot of time with, you have a lot in common with them. That's because you're feeding off of them and you're feeding into them as well. If those closest people aren't looking like they love the Lord, is it a surprise that you don't look like that as well? When we care about Christian community, when we care about loving the Lord together, it will have much better results. I love old sayings for some reason. 
but one that I continue to go back to, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. That's certainly true with our faith, because you can muscle through your faith, and you can be so excited about God, and you can, you can do it all your own. But like the seed that fell on the rocky soil, it might not take root, and it'll sprout up fast and fizzle out. If we care about Christian community, and we care about our brothers and sisters in Christ, if we care about the love of the Lord together, I'd imagine our faith will go much further further. One of the beauties of our God, of, of, the goodness of, of the goodness of our God, is that he does not desire that we, that we would be alone. He invites us back to a relationship with him through his son. He paves the way through the cross, and he uh, offers us the assistance of the Holy Spirit, this helper to be with us so that we are not spiritually alone. And he gives us this beautiful gift of the church where we can be together with our Christian brothers and sisters and be together in the love of the Lord. I'll leave us with one more thing before we close out our first session. It's just a reminder that there is not a thing in this world that can give you the kinds of purpose, the kinds of love, and the kinds of peace that God can give us. Praise God that we can taste and see His goodness. Praise God that when we seek out the Lord, He hears us. Praise God that when we are in need and are crying out, He comforts us and He is our rescue. Man, does that taste good. Our Lord, though, is not just worthy because of who He is. He's not just worthy because of what He's done, but He's also worthy of love because of when he does it. Once more, at the end of Psalm 34, we'll look at this in our next session. This is verse 17. When the righteous call for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted, and he saved the crush in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteousness, but the Lord, the Lord delivers him out of them all. Even in our moments of great need, we can still taste and see that God is good. We can still know that God hears us. We can still know that God comforts us, that God delivers us. What we love matters. Who, who we love matters, but also when we love him matters too. We'll talk more about that in our next session. As we close here with a prayer, I want you to think about where is your heart? Where is where is your mind? Are you, are you between two things? Do you love God but love the things of this world? Do you love Jesus but you really are excited about the things in your life? It is okay to love the things that you have unless they come before God. Where is your heart? Where does your mind keep going to? Is it going to the things of this world or is it going to your love for the Lord? Let's pray together. Lord God, you are good. Lord, you're wonderful. And Lord, we are just overjoyed that you love us, that you would desire to have a relationship with us, Lord, that you would long to be with us and that you would make that possible through the sacrifice of your son. Lord, make us aware of the times where we are looking to things other than you. Lord, make us aware of the ways that we can draw near to you daily and that we can draw others near to you as well. Lord, I'm prayerful over us this evening as we continue to lift our voices in song. And Lord, I pray that as we spend time together and spend time with you, that the taste on our mouth is a good feeling, a good understanding that you are with us and you love us. And Lord, that you would know that we love you too. Lord, thank you for the gift of your son. It's in his name that we pray. Amen.